DNSToys.com is not only a website, but it's also a domain name server that you can use to do things that are useful with DNS. Are it? Is it though? I actually, no, it's more, I would say, just kind of having fun with the text fields in, in DNS. Because you can send a DNS query to an IP address and it will send a datagram back to you based on your query. Uh, really simple. By default in your in your house, your your ISP will provide a it's like a, a DNS resolver that is pre-programmed into your router and that's also standard within the ISP's network. They do this so they can cache DNS IPs and makes your internet browsing faster. Those are the resolvers. And so what we can do is we can we can have some fun by sending some queries as we can see here some DNS toy queries. Uh, that give us some interesting, we can do some interesting things. I mean, you basically get, like, for example here, you're sending a query, uh, mumbai.time, which looks like a domain name, but really it's a query. It's like, what time is it in Mumbai? Then you pass the resolver, do the, essentially the target endpoint, and it's not much different than sending an HTTP request to a server and getting back a response. It's basically the same thing, and the format is, is different. And you're also communicating in UDP. So let's try this out here. Let's try out the uh, let's let's run this uh, query over to DNS Toys on port 53. Run that query, and then we can see here that it gives a, a response back uh, saying Mumbai. It found the city. It knew what you're talking about, and it gives us the current date and time. But I wonder. Let's try. Let's try. Uh, let's try a U.S. Uh, city, Seattle, and see if that. I'm. Let's see if that does it. It, it found it. <laughs> Check it out. All right. It is January 10th. Negative zero eight zero zero, which gives you time zone context there. Oh, I guess also time zone context is right here as well. We're having fun with DNS toys and taking a look at some of the options that they provide, which is kind of an interesting, fun idea. I never really thought of using DNS resolver to return queries that are just asking for information, just like any other protocol. I really guess it's the same thing. You make a request and you get a response. Another one of the options that they provide is weather. So we can try out some weather here really quick. Let's see Mumbai weather. All right, see what what, what we get, what comes back here. Okay. Oh, we get several text response back. Check this out. Why do we have several? Oh, okay. So it's actually giving us uh, over the next few hours here, looks like about 10 hours worth of weather forecasting. So we get the current weather, which must be the first option here. Uh, and then we get the next Four, which is the forecast part of it. This is pretty cool. And they have another one over here, unit conversion. Ooh, okay, well, why, why not? Let's try this out. So we'll turn 42 kilometers into miles, 42 being a really good number, of course. What does that look like, that conversion? Okay, so it turned 40 kilometers, kilometers equals 26.1 miles. That's just such a weird, <laughs> we should just use the kilometers. Uh, everyone, I don't, is there a reason that we haven't switched over everyone? I feel like there was a legitimate reason, but. I don't, I mean, there is an expense because kind of, you know, things are, are labeled with non-metric. So to replace all those things, I mean, we could do it over time. It's not like we have a giant store of uh, non-metric based measurements, like on, on things like, uh, well, the rulers actually, oh wait, are we already, we're already doing this. If you have systems of measure and meters and, or uh, so the metric, what is that called when it's not the metric? <laughs> imperial? I think, I'm pretty sure it's imperial, right? Yes, so we're kind of already, we're already there. It's just, we have both, right? And, and ruling and measuring and other things that require measurement of things. We put both on them. We Why do we still use Imperial? Because we've already gone halfway. It's like, okay, everything, like what was it, years ago, decades ago, we're like, okay, we'll put a whole bunch of um, measurements onto an item that were in, in Imperial because we need the measurements uh, for measuring tools. But then we'll also add the metric system side by side, which we see here. And now do we really need the Imperial because we've already done the conversion of, you know, the halfway point, right? The migration. So do we still need Imperial? Do we? Do we need Imperial? I don't know. If we... DNS Toys provides us a few more options to play with, in, including uh, we were looking at now currency conversion, which is valuable because if we have the current rates of currencies, we can do exchanges of currencies from one currency to another and to another and then back again. And this is arbitrage. So if we have, that's kind of a neat, it's like a, 
a little pathing system. You can do conversions along the way uh, by converting, and then you'll end up by converting back into the native currency uh, and earning money, essentially. Arbitrage. It's pretty neat. And so all you need to do is have a table of all the conversion rates between each of the currencies, and then you run a, a nested for loop over each to see which of the chains will end up with a profit. And then if you can execute orders and fill them, uh, uh, you probably could because there's enough currency to go around. You can execute those uh, those orders fast enough, you'll earn money. That's arbitrage. And it's just throwing money around and changing. <laughs> and it's actually very beneficial for arbitrage uh, people to profit off of this because what it does is it helps it helps converge some of the value of the currencies between each other during these exchanges. So there is, there is a nice benefit to economies as well by having people who profit off of arbitrage. Let's try out the DNS toy really quick. All right, we have uh, 100 US dollars to rupees. Uh, and we see 100 US dollars equals uh, 82,000 rupees. That's as of, wait, hold on. It seems like this is out of date. <laughs> There's 2023, May 28th. Okay. Well, we probably don't want to be using DNS choice to making arbitrage decisions because <laughs> it's a slightly out of date there. And you know, we do have a JC command that can take, because I mean, if you look at this, it's kind of hard to sort of parse what's going on here. You know, I wonder if we could do just short plus short, see what that does. Yep. Okay. There we go. That's a little bit easier to parse, right? Dig short. And then you get back just the answer. That's what they should have done. They should have put plus short so you could see it a little bit better, like in all these do examples, although I, it would extend the example a little bit. Let's see what the Canadian dollar to the Australian dollar looks like. Let's add the plus short. There you go, plus short. All right, so you get an extra $6.33 by uh, taking Canadian dollars and purchasing uh, Australian as of May. <laughs> May 28th last year. So we can also use the JC command to pipe the dig answer into JC, which can take common uh, Linux tool uh, outputs and convert them into JSON. And so I can say that I'm gonna in receive a dig output and it will give me back data in JSON. Then I could probably pipe that over to JQ to pull out the answer like this. So we got JQ uh, root, we always just dot for the root, the first element uh, and the answer. And then we get back our query and the data, which is kind of neat. Or <laughs> you could just say short. <laughs> give back a, a simple answer like that, which then you, of course, you will parse, but it's basically the same thing as this right here, right? So there are a few more query commands that DNS Toys gives us that are kind of interesting and fun to test out. We also have with us our IP echo. If ever you needed to know what uh, IP that the world sees your device as, you can use this echo IP uh, command, which is kind of neat. And you can even say, oh, what's my IPv6 address uh, or my IP4? And it's just sending the IP query over to the DNS.toys. Uh, resolver. I'm not going to run that one. <laughs> if, you, if you thought I was going to run that one, uh, I won't be doing that one. However, there are a couple other interesting number to words. Hmm. I'm guessing there's some ASCII business happening here. Convert numbers into English words. This is just weird. All right, what's going on here? Let me shorten that. Number nine. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's just turning it into uh, how you pronounce it with an, well, I guess in English in this case. So we've got 987,654,321. That makes sense. Okay. What if we put a really big number? Big, 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 big. Is it going to, oh, it can't. <laughs> It has troubles. All right, yeah, it can't do it. Trillion, 98 trillion. I mean, how far does it go? Oh, we got up to quadrillion. Oh, that was a little too far. All right, this is about, it can go up to, uh, up to a quadrillion. That's where, that's where it likes to sit. That was, that was kind of neat, but not needed. <laughs> you don't need that. Some other really good ones is, uh, I like this because this will give you, um, you don't need to throw a command off somewhere on some server to get this information. However, you can see the number of usable addresses with a cider with a slash 24. It's going to tell you that you can use use this, I think it's just this last octet, right? So th should this be around, this is around 255? I should know this. I should already know this. Okay, it was, it was around 255, which is 256. All right, <laughs> I, was I was worried there for a second. <laughs> yeah, so slash 24 says the last octet is accessible uh, to the CIDR range, which is something that says anything in this range will be usually using firewall rules that says this is the range that's allowed when uh, your when packets are passing through. Or you could set a rule when a packet range is in this range, we might want to 
fork it, maybe duplicate it, or you can do a whole bunch of things. And I bet this one's gonna be even bigger because it's IPv6. Let's see what let's see what it comes back. Let's do a plus short to get back the exact answer. Okay, so it's about a million, a little bit over a million. We must have uh, number based conversion dex to hexadecimal, or yeah, a decimal to hex. <laughs> I wanna try that real quick. 64, 100 to 64. Oh, so then we should be able to say 255 is FF, right? 255, FF, FF. Yes, that's right, FF, we win. We can also get pi, 3.14, oh, that's funny, ha. <laughs> It's returning it in uh, the uh, an A record, which has to be an IP address. So you get four octets and it's gonna give you, it could go with one more. Why did it? Well, I guess they wanted a 3.1, so it was obvious. But I mean, it would have been obvious anyways. What happens when we do dot text? Oh, then we get the actual answer, 31459. Uh, and then if we do it uh, in quad A record, what does that look like? Oh, cool. Oh, it can return to quad A record. Well, see, I like this because they're using every single digit space possible that's available to it. Is it no? Oh, it is because it's just hex. So they had to do some work to get that to work right because this is some conversion here. We also have an English dictionary. What's the definition of the word fun? A uh, noun. Disposition towards find or uh, make causes of amusement. Oh, you can also use it as mockery. <laughs> That make fun of, a figure of fun. We also have rolling dice. Let's try that one out real quick. Oh, I rolled a one. I rolled a three. I rolled a five. Another five. Wait, can I get a 3D 20-sided die? Okay, perfect for Dungeons and Dragons situations. 12, three. Oh, I got throttled. I've been playing with DNS toys too much. <laughs> there it goes. All right, here we go. We could toss a coin. We can get random numbers. We can convert Unix Epoch. Oh, that's kind of neat. Okay. What happens when I give it a big number? All right, 2026. Ah, calculate aerial distances. Okay, that's a little easier to calculate, right? Because you don't have to worry about curvatures. Or do you think they involve curvatures in this case, right? If you're doing earth distance, you have to include the curvature. So it looks like lat long. Between two lat long points, we get 14.13 kilometers. And then we can generate UUIDs. Oh, wow, it gave, it gave me more than one. I was, I was not expecting that. Can we do four? Yes, we can. Is there a six? There's a six? Does it go to seven? What is going on here? Oh, okay. I thought it was the version. I'm like, okay, version five UUID, but you version four, and then we generate in number. So th this includes, so uh, there's an upper limit, of course, but we could probably say 20. Oh, I don't know, that actually might, be too big. Oh, it wasn't. Okay. So we generated 20 UUIDs in about one kilobyte of data. And just in case you stayed all the way till the end of the video, we have the reason why DNS toys was set up. It's for fun. I mean, obviously all these, these, uh, these commands and things can mostly be run as just commands locally on your system, though it is kind of nice to be able to access them from any system at any point using a common protocol like, uh, port 53 UDP datagrams to fetch queries against DNS 